Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant TV. In this tutorial, I'm going to work with some stereoscopic tools and After Effects to create some 3D with trap code form and particular. And this will work with any of the 3D supported products that Red Giant has, like Trap Code Lux or 3D Stroke, or even Plain Space and more. What makes these tools 3D is that they react to the After Effects 3D camera. So if the camera moves, then there's a shift in perspective. And that's really important for creating stereoscopic 3D. Anyway, I recently created a free preset for Red Giant People, and this is it. And uh, I thought that it would be cool to attempt some stereoscopics with it. And uh, while I'm by no means an expert, hey, I, f I figured it's worth talking about. I've modified the project a lot, obviously, only proving, of course, that presets are a great starting point, but that you should always sort of take it beyond that. Now, I downloaded a, a free set of scripts by Chris Keller from his website, pinkhow.com. You get there and you just go to this area called Forum, and uh, it will take you to these tools right away. And here's your download link right there, and uh, as you can see, there's tutorials here. Now, I'm going to do the most basic stuff that you can do, um, and if you want to go deeper, definitely get a hold of the free tools and watch these tutorials, because there is a lot more to stereoscopics than that I'm covering by far. I mean, his tutorials, he's got hours of them on these tools. And uh, if you watch these, you will definitely become very knowledgeable and be able to apply that stuff to your work. Anyway, I'm going to do stuff that's a lot more basic, that'll give you a really basic foundation for using trap code stuff and working with layers in After Effects uh, and creating stereoscopics. But if you want to take it beyond that, check out this site, check out these tutorials. Let's get started. So here I am in After Effects and I've got my 3D composition. Um, and what we're doing here is, you know, we've got trap code form that's using to gener being used to generate the planets and the rings around this uh, other planet, as well as the, uh, the comet that you'll see here. And then it's followed up with some particles that I'm using from trap code particular. I'm actually driving the uh, animation of the, of the comet and the particles through a null object in 3D space. You know, I think I'll make this project available on Red Giant People so that you can also take a look at it and uh, break it apart and see how it was done. In any case, this is one perspective, but you do need two for stereoscopic 3D. So we have to generate a second eye view, right? And that's, of course, you know, we're trying to simulate, you know, the normal experience of viewing. And that's, you know, your eyes are separated by a certain amount of space. And, you know, you look at something and that creates uh, the depth based on how your eyes converge. So let's uh, let's do this with my space um, with my space comp selected. Um, I'm going to use the tools uh, that I got from Chris Keller's site, and I'm making two assumptions here. And apologize uh, if they are if they're faulty, but I'm assuming that you have some knowledge of trap code form and particular. Uh, and if you don't, you can always download this project and just bring them into After Effects and work from there. And I'm assuming that you've watched at least a few minutes of Chris Keller's tutorials so that you can understand how to install and set up these, uh, these plugins. There's also just some text help that come with them that'll help you do it. So once you know how to install these, and once you know how to initiate them to make them work, then, uh, then they're here. So that's it. I'm not going to run through that stuff. And let's, uh, let's just do it. I've got my space comp selected, and I'm clicking on Generate Write Comp. And what this does is this creates a second composition that is a perfect duplicate of my composition that I already created. Now, there's something here called Auto Link Properties. Um, if you're not planning on making changes, then you don't need to have this selected. But if you do have this selected, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble because any change I make in this comp to anything that's, uh, that you can put on, an expression on, any, usually almost everything keyframeable, but not quite everything that is keyframeable can have an expression. Any change I make here, like to the camera motion, any of that goes into my second comp. Uh, it'll all be automatically done. There's some properties that won't, but, you know, for the most part. I'm not going to worry about any of that stuff because in this case, I'm not making any changes. This is a great animation. I like it the way it is. But let's take a look at our space right comp. And this is going to be the right view. And uh, if you take a quick look, there is uh, no difference between the two. That's because we have to make a change. And that is, come right here. I'll select my stereo controls in a... Uh, on this null object that's right here, go into my effects settings, and I'll just set the slider to 10, which will move it over 10 pixels. Of course, you're not actually seeing that here because we got to, we have to go into our space right comp, and you can see now that there is actually a shift in perspective. And um, 
I've gone with a very low number, and it's not a number I recommend, at least for a project with that should have a lot of depth in it, like this one. But I want to use it to illustrate some points, and then we'll come back and we'll fix it. So here I am. I'm looking at space uh, and space right, and you can see there is a shift in perspective. The next thing we need to do is to combine these two views into a 3D stereoscopic, you know, composition. So I'm going to select both my space and my space right and I'm going to go into my stereo viewer tools again these are scripts that you would uh, you you'd already know how to use but um, at least to launch and then from here I'm going to click on generate stereo comps and once that's done we take a look and we've got a new folder called stereo viewer and the only thing that you want to touch in here is the one called stereo viewer everything else are pre comps that you don't want to get into um, and I'll double click on this and it'll open and here we go we've got now something that's uh, anaglyph the red and the blue uh, separation uh, so you'd be using your anaglyph 3d glasses stereoscopic uh, these tools I've got one in front of me um, and I'm putting them on and I can see that there is definitely some uh, 3d-edness going on here and uh, what I want to do is um, I want to just change a few things so that we can uh, we can make a few you know we can learn a few things here something to keep in mind is if you put these glasses on and you take a look, you're going to see that that virtually everything right now is popping out of the screen. And that's because of a setting on our convergence point. Now, mind you, everything looks like flat layers that are all popping out of the screen on almost uh, no difference um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of 3D space. They're just like a few inches or a few centimeters off the monitor. So let's take a look at some of these controls here, and we'll, we'll kind of go from here. We've got something here called convergence. Convergence is the point at which the red and the blue are going to converge and make something an object of focus. And I don't mean focus like, like uh, you know, having blur, having focus blur and that kind of thing, but it's basically where the red and the blue will come together. And what that will do is create an object that is sitting exactly on the space where your monitor is. Anything in 3D space that falls in front of that will pop out, and anything that falls behind that convergence space will be behind it further deeper into your monitor um, and the best way to think about this is think about when you take your finger and you put it up against your nose and you try to look at it focus on it what happens the finger becomes one object right now you know if you just put it up close and you're focusing on your monitor it's two but you uh, you put your finger there and you focus on it then it becomes one image that's put together and everything behind it like your, what you're seeing on your monitor is going to split up into two views it gives me kind of a headache um, and makes me a little nauseous that's for me most of what 3d does anyhow so you've got this done take this out check this out so you've now converged on that one spot and that's what we're doing here we are converging so that one object will be the area of focus and uh, everything else will be separated so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with this convergence slider and let's set it up so that the planet is really the converged area and you know let me set this to full res and uh we'll zoom in a little bit so I just I can get the convergence just right okay that's pretty good so if we take a look here's what's interesting the planet is everything is white which by the way is only happening because there's not a lot of depth in our composition we'll talk more about that in a moment but look what happens to the object in front this object right here this planet has red on the right side and this will be if you put your 3d glasses on you'll see that this is popping off the monitor just a little bit but enough that you can tell that it's actually pushing out into 3d space into your world whereas this object right here in the back right let's go back here this one right here the red is on the left side so we've got red on the right side for objects that are are forward of the of the conversion space and they're on the left side for things that are behind the conversion space. It's really interesting. And that's how these, this system works. Anything that's uh, being pushed forward will have red and blue on one side and red and blue on the other for things behind it. And that's how it kind of distorts your, your vision and creates this, uh, this 3D effect. I mean, I don't really understand the science behind it, but, it's, but breaking it down, you can see that this is the mechanism that is needed to make this happen. Okay, so now you've got that done. And if, again, if you put your 3D glasses on, you're going to see that there's really not much depth to this, not a lot of depth at all. And I'm going to converge so this planet here is now uh, is going to be the area of convergence. And watch what happens. The 
the planet here now is now sitting on your monitor and everything else is behind it. We can also go all the way back there. Let's do it with, why don't we do it with the stars, right? And again, this is only going to work because there's not a lot of depth. My stars are actually pushed out at a lot of distance in 3D space, but this is, and you can see a couple of places where they don't meet. But you put this on and now your stars are the flat part of the monitor and uh, and everything else is is pushing out a little bit into 3D space. Maybe it's an inch, maybe it's a centimeter, you know, by your perspective. But you can see that these things are pushing out into 3D space. Okay, so now let's do some real work here because frankly this is not going to sell me on the 3D uh, stereoscopic wonderment that, uh, that, that everyone in the industry is trying to push. Let's jump back uh, into our space comp, but before we do that, let's lock the view. That means that no matter what comp I jump to, it's going to stay visual in this comp. So I'm jumping back to my comp here, and you can see that, again, we're still seeing the 3D scopics from the stereo viewer, but we're actually in my original space comp. With my stereo control selected, I'm going to crank this number up to 60, and we'll see how much separation we get. Now that is a lot more separation than we've had. So let's jump back into the stereo viewer comp and let's pick a convergence point. I'm going to run to the end right here. And what I want to do is I want to have, when we get to the end of this animation, I want to have the planet, the edge of the planet, the outer part of the planet being the flat point on my monitor, but everything else pushing out or behind. So the planets will be behind it. The, ring will, the rings will be pushing out a little bit. So let's, let's do that. I'm just going to have to kind of eyeball it a little bit. looks pretty good. So as you can see, the outer edges are white, but because we've added a lot of depth to this comp by separating out the cameras a bunch and that number I'm using may be ridiculously high, but it is going to, you know, it works for what we're doing here. Um, what we've got going on here is we've got you can see this red and blue separation so that the ca the planet's shape will curve out towards us and if we throw our 3D glasses on, we can really see that the rings are popping out a bit too and the planets that are in the background are you know, again, they're, uh, they're, they're pushing back and the stars are much further behind them. Let me actually go full screen here, so as close to it as I, as I can. Um, and now take a look at this a little better. It's looking pretty, pretty good, nice in 3D. And, you know, you might want to even go further on the depth, but for the purposes of this demonstration, this is certainly, certainly working. Okay. And now with a RAM preview, we can see that we've got some nice uh, 3D going on here. And, um, you know, we resolve with the planet being at the center point of our universe and, uh, you know, other objects moving forward or behind it. Now, one thing you're going to notice, though, is there's a problem on the edge here. See, as the planet uh, kind of goes off the side, stuff that's on the different sides get cut off depending on uh, where they are. And that's because, you know, we separated the view a little bit and then we sort of, you know, we recombine them back, but we had to move them over to do that. And so we've cut off part of what we're supposed to be seeing here. Well, there's a fix for that. The tools come with uh, a scale slider, and we can just scale this up. Here, let me just bring it down so we can see. We just scale this up just until we, you know, until we cover up the problem there. And uh, then you can do another RAM preview, and you'll see that everything is working as it should. And yeah, it's looking great. I mean, nothing's cut off on the sides anymore. We've got some nice uh, 3D perspective, some stuff moving out in 3D space. It's, it's looking pretty good. So hopefully this has helped you uh, to get started. I, I can't take any credit for the information that I've imparted. I basically watched a lot of tutorials on the subject of stereoscopic workflow, and uh, and then I tried to adapt it to working with the trap code products in particular here. Um, but but you know again, I just gleaned this information from watching tutorials by Chris Keller and also from checking out uh, you know some interesting articles on 3D stereoscopics. So hopefully I haven't mangled uh, the information too much, but like I said, good starting point for you to sort of take it from here. And again, I'm going to strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you watch Chris, uh, Chris's tutorials on pinkhow.com because uh, they show you how to use the tools, uh, not just with 3D layers that we're working in After Effects, but also combining that stuff with uh, footage that's actually been shot uh, with a stereoscopic camera. Don't forget, you can download a free trial version of the software that I used in this tutorial at RedGiantSoftware.com. And you can get free presets for Red Giant plugins on RedGiantPeople.com. And to keep up with the latest news about new products, tutorials, tips, and deals, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or on our blog. 
Once again, I'm Marlon Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. See you next time.